Looks like we're in for a spaghetti dinner, guys. Welcome back to another beautiful episode here at the Gruesome Garage. It's an absolutely frozen day. It's about 15 degrees outside right now. And we're about to warm this place up. Not only Mr. Heater, but I'm gonna do a little TIG time with Matt. And we're gonna clean up this spaghetti mess. This is the GM trigger sensor that we got in our kit from Anthony. And the three colors are black, blue, and brown it looks like, brown orange. I have some spare wiring off the harness, so we're gonna match those. I have black and white, <coughs> tan and blue. We're gonna use those to splice into here. And the nice thing about this kit is it comes with the resistor already, how cute. So we'll also get into splicing that into the system. It's basically the same exact thing as before with our stock crank trigger, but you know, we're just doing it to this one. Let's get at it. We're gonna start with the simplest one, which is blue, and that's the ground. And that one does not have the resistor, so that's gonna be super easy, quick. Let's get to soldering. Now that we got the ground extended, we're gonna move on to the more complicated wire. Pretty simple. The nice thing is the pull-up resistor gives uh, comes color coordinated. So this is the supply line, or it's going to be either five volts or twelve volts. With our system, it's five volts. So I got it spliced in there, and then the black is going to be our <coughs> signal wire, and that's going to be over here. So. That's gonna be our crank signal. Let's solder this up, make it pretty, and get to that. So we got our harmonic balancer. Here it is, all nice and uh, milled out. Balanced, everything ready to roll. So now it's time to put this in and put our mount our sensor. So let's do it. Out with the old and in with the new. Now that we got that set up, we got to put our bracket on for the uh, sensor. So this has two holes in it, oblong, perfect, a little adjustment. This bolts to the, uh, where the oil pan bolts to the block. So you got to take two bolts out and put two studs in and just put nuts on it. So let's get that mounted. We got the bracket on. I don't know if you can see that too well. I'll show you from the top. A little better view. So there it is. Just sits right next to it, bolts on, take out two of the oil pan bolts and uh, bolt it up and that's it. So now we gotta put the sensor in and get a battery in this thing and see if she uh, cranks to life. We also gotta physically wire the sensor. I didn't wanna wire it until we knew the end of the run and the complete length of the wire. And number two, we need to set the air gap on the sensor. Look at it. Sitting so pretty in there. It's like it belongs. Can't even tell that we had it to add some wiring. Now, I didn't want to cut open my main harness. So I decided to run it through with all most of the other stuff and I just ran it up against the fuel rail, dumped it down and out of the way of anything moving. And I'll show you guys what I did inside. Brought it through with my loom, brought it down up, and then I added it into my relay board where you can see the V-Ref, which is my five volt supply, the tack sensor, which is the crank sensor signal, and then I used the ground I connected into one of the sensor grounds. Now there's one last thing we have to do before we get this Jeep running. And that, again at least, and that is to go into Tuner Studio and to change our trigger wheel settings. Right now, well, 
I changed already, but right before we had, if you go up to here to ignition settings and go to the wheel decoder, we had it up here set to Jeep 2000 crank trigger. And now we are using a tooth wheel, as you could obviously see. And here's a couple more of the settings that I changed. Now that we have our trigger sensor changed in Mega Squirt, let's try this puppy out. And she's dead. So you know what that means, guys. Tune in next time and you'll find out if we can get this thing running with the GM crank trigger. Hopefully.